Okay, so now let's just work through a slightly more advanced example so you can start to see some of the other things that you could piece together within the query editor, okay? Now, just the thing to remember is the query editor can be utilized in with many different combinations, okay? And so it's just a matter of becoming familiar with all of these different things that you can do. So I wanna stress that the, the a, a sensible thing to do inside of the query editor would be to just go through and and get familiar with all of these different transformations that you can make and ways that you can make them you can obviously um, use the right click which i personally use quite a lot you can also use the ribbon all of the same things are generally up in the ribbon here and you know you can transform a particular column but you can also add a column there's different things that you can you can do with that you can also click here for things to do with the entire table um, so you can see here that you can make a lot of different um, sort of column trans or, or row transformations as well. You know, keep top rows, keep bottom rows, keep range of rows, etc. So you can do some filtering as well. You can also use this drop down and do some interesting filtering as well, um, utilizing, utilizing this. And, and it's all recorded. So whenever you do anything, it is recorded in the supplied steps and will happen automatically when you refresh your data ultimately. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to build out a bit of information in our table here, right? So we've got some um, data that we want to bring in to this particular table or just to bring into our model, right? So that we can um, add some uh, additional analysis that might not be in our raw data, okay? And what I'm going to do here um, and this is going to highlight a few things, one being that you can bring in data from many different locations, is I'm going to go and search for some California population data, okay? And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, just go search for California demographics data, okay? So if you're, if you're on your machine as well, um, search for that in Google, and then what you want to find is you want to find a website called california-demographics.com. Okay, click onto that. And this just brings you to a website uh, which has a lot of information. You can download it in Excel, etc. But what I want to do is I want to just go down to the uh, California cities by population. And I can actually see this data embedded into a website. Okay, so you see here I've got a breakdown of all the different regions uh, and all of the different populations. Okay, so what I can do is I can grab this particular URL I can copy it and then I'm going to come back into the query editor here. Okay, I'm going to go home, I'm going to go new source and I'm going to go web. Okay, because we can we can scrape data off, off a lot of websites, off most websites if it's in the right format. Okay, so this is this the, this data itself is in a pretty good format. So what I can do is I can just input the URL and I then go connect. And what should happen here, once it all uh, comes uh, comes out, it will show a pop-up with all of the data and I can start seeing what it might look like. Because you've got to remember that queries are like screenshots, right? They're like screenshots. And so it's still working away, just trying to get the connection. Um, I, I would say, I would suggest that the internet, your internet connection needs to be you know, relatively good if you want this to work really, really fast. Um, but let's have a look. So what we can do, is we've got a number of different objects here. I'm gonna try and get the table, see what it looks like. So you see here that I've now brought in the table of data directly from that website. And what's gonna happen is when I embed this into as a query, because remember this is just a, a, a snapshot, um, I can then manipulate it in any different way that I want. And then when I refresh the data, it's gonna constantly go and hit that website and bring the data in. Okay, so the website gets updated all the time. The updated data is gonna come in as well. So I'm just gonna go okay. Okay, so this query, see down here, is now a supported query. Oh, it's now, the, now in our other queries um, folder, rather. And so what I can do is I can quickly change the name because that name is not good enough. Uh, California um, population population data, let's just go this. This is gonna be a um, supporting table. I'd probably, um, I'll probably change this around actually. This is gonna be a supporting table, so I don't feel I need to like totally name it correctly. It just needs to be kind of obvious. Okay, so now I have, and what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna bring this into my supporting queries, because I know this is gonna be another supporting query one that I have. 
So this is a this is a screenshot. I'm just going to double check that everything's correct before going on. So yep, it looks looks okay. Uh, and then I've got rank, city, and population. Okay, so what I want to do now is I actually want to. So we have a look at our um, locations here. What we will find is that there is a connection between the city name here and the city name in um, the CA population data. So we can check that by doing a merge because ultimately I don't want this to be a separate table because I've already got all of these cities listed in my location table uh, and that's the level of granularity. Well then I just want to bring that population data into my um, table right you'll see here that we actually already have the population data but what you'll find is this might be old right and so what the website is doing um, is it's bringing in the latest data okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this particular column here and then I'm going to go to merge queries up here okay and I'm just gonna I'll just to quickly do it just to make sure because you've got to make sure that you uh, want to merge this one and I want to go and find my CA population data and I want to merge it to this column here. Okay, I'll just click through there. Okay, cool. So you see here, look down the bottom here, we're going to merge this table into this ta table here. Okay, and you can do a number of different join kinds. Uh, I generally just leave it on this one, but there's other ones you can do for more unique um, joins. But you'll see here that this one is a is a like for like comparison. The selection makes 74, 74 rows from the first table. Okay, so there's enough data in this particular table um, that covers all of the iterations of our location um, table and our in, in, in our raw data. Okay, so I'm going to go OK and then check out what happened in the supplied steps. We now have a merged query. So what's happened is in this particular column here, it says table is basically this particular query being merged into this one. Okay, and then what you want to do here is I don't probably need all of that data, right? I don't need the rank, I don't need the city as well, because I already have the city in my table. All I want is the updated population information. So I'm going to unclick those and then I'm going to go OK. Cool. And so now I have the most up to date population data. And what I can do is I could ultimately, you know, get rid of this column here and I could call rename this. I could go population data like so. And you see all of these being recorded down the bottom here. And then just to finish off, I could come down here and right click, um, disable the load. Remember, because what I want is I do want this to be queried but I don't need this entire table to be loaded into my model. It's got the, the data I need is now in this tape, this query here, this locations query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the load. And so it's going to become italics and grayed out. Okay. And so now in this, in this particular table, I have the most up-to-date population data. Um, the data type is correct. And now once I bring this in, I now can compare information or, or um, sales information based on, say, population information. You know, one interesting thing that comes to mind is you could say, okay, well, how much is um, a, uh, a is a cities in in California? How much of a percent of total of the total population of California is it? And then we could maybe compare that to the sales that we're making in all of those different locations. Like, is one particular region or city? You know, ha having a huge impact on us on our sales versus another one. You know, based on the the, the population of that particular city. Um, so, so many different ways that you could then use that analysis for some sort of valuable decision making that you might do um, in in the future. Okay, so I think that's all I want to do for this particular video. Um, I want to um, maybe just quickly round things um, round things off for this query editor section there's there's honestly so much more you can do here okay and um, it's just you know this is just a beginner's guide course um, there's there's just so many different you know within within our, um, our main membership offering we have you know far more far more details around you know and far more advanced examples of how you can actually utilize things even more here um, but you know, this is just a great, great way to become just familiar with this particular part of Power BI. Because some of you, I'm sure, 
weren't even aware of it this is a you know this is what i hear regularly you know it takes you a while to even know this is available to you and you know hopefully you'll be able to see some of the potential uh, with the examples that we've we've gone through okay let's move on um hope you know, next up we'll be committing this data into our actual model and then you know creating some relationships and, and an actual real true true data model um, in, in our power bi report okay 